Chapter 1 The Tilden Ancestry The Dens of the Wields of Kent Sir Richard Tilden's ancestors intermarriage with an effu of William the Conqueror. John Tilden of Ben Nenden, a D. 1400 Nathaniel Tilden emigrates to America. Commodore Perblet. George Tigner. Major General Warren. The Mayflower John Tilden's musket. His grandson Samuel's first and last sporting experience. Major Doubleday. William Jones, founder of New Haven. David Yale, one of the founders of Yale College. Governor Hopkins. Samuel Jones Dr. Younglove. Sir John Maxwell Tilden. General William Burton Tilden. Richard Tilden. Elam Tilden. He has served his country well, says Voltaire, has no need of ancestors. Tested by this principle, the biographer of Samuel Jones Tilden has no occasion to investigate his pedigree or to illuminate his name with ancestral blasonry. But it is not for the illustrious dead that we perpetuate the memory of their achievements. It is for those who survive and succeed them that the example of a useful life deserves to be lifted up and made conspicuous. The qualities that he inherits are an essential part of every man's life. We should have the most imperfect notion of the oak of our acquaintance with it did not begin until it had become the monarch of the forest. When a man's life begins, and when it tends are equally beyond the range of mortal apprehension, what we inherit may serve as an apology for our infirmities, but affords no pretext for boasting of our achievements. It is only what we add to the quality of our racial stock that we can in any sense call our own, or to which the words, well done, good and faithful servant, can be rightfully applied. Such I believe to have been substantially the views of the eminent statesman whose career I have undertaken to describe. Qui cert by in sun pays na pass besoin de use. Footnote. Mare Ope, Act 1, Scene 3. Among the papers which Mr. Tilden left behind him, and to which he consecrated a considerable portion of his leisure during the last six or eight months of his life, was a somewhat elaborate genealogical history of the Tilden family. The reasons he assigns for preparing it are such as will justify me in dwelling briefly upon its contents. This paper, he wrote, is the fruit, partly, of a collection formed by throwing into a drawer during many years, almost without plan or definite purpose, memoranda of particular facts which came casually to the collector, and partly by special investigations caused by him at intervals. These materials have now been examined and collected during the leisure moments of a few weeks, under a sense that this work could only be done with the aid of a memory supplying the connections between the scattered materials, and that the information might be of interest, perhaps of utility, to the younger members of the family. A knowledge of one's descent from a line of virtuous, honorable, and reputable ancestors who performed worthily their part in their day and generation and who enjoyed the esteem of their contemporaries, is an incentive to imitate their example. That a heredity in mental and moral as well as in physical capacities and qualities exists, at least as a tendency, has been recognized in all ages, although the laws by which it is governed have never been ascertained. How blessed is he who his progenitors, with pride remembers, to the listener tells the story of their greatness, of their deeds, and, silently rejoicing, sees himself the last link of this illustrious chain. From this monograph we learn much that is interesting of the race from which the subject of this memoir obviously derived many of the qualities which made him a conspicuous figure in our history, and upon which it was his privilege to confer new distinction. On the large map of the county of Kent in England, made from the Ordnance Survey, the name of Tilden appears in four places, and on the sheets defining the parishes, five several times. On the large map of the county of Kent in England, made from the Ordnance Survey, the name of Tilden appears in four places, and on the sheets defining the parishes, five several times. Mr. Joseph Samuel Chester, in a letter written to Mr. Tilden, 
October 9, 1873, from London, says, The name is peculiar to the county of Kent and is undoubtedly from those smaller subdivisions of territory that appear to exist only in what is known as the Weald of Kent, called dens. The Saxon word den is equivalent to the modern word dale or dell. The entire Weald of Kent is one vast dale or dell, and in one portion of it in particular there are numerous smaller dales, which from time immemorial have borne names ending in den, which names were also given to the towns and villages in the neighborhood. Thus, Tinterden, Biddenden, Benenden, Ralvenden, Marden, Smarden, etc., are all towns or villages lying together within a circuit of very small diameter, and the termination den seldom, if ever, occurs in the names of towns in any other part of the county of Kent. One of these dales or dens bore the name of Tilden from an early period. One Simon Tilden, of Benenden, by his wool, dated October 10th, 1463, bequeathed his land called Dredgefold next the upper den of Tilden, and John Tilden, of Marden, by his wool, dated April 1, 1492, bequeathed sundry lands in Marden on the den of Tilden. This subdivision known by the name of Tilden had therefore existed long before the period of the adoption of surnames, and it is but fair to presume that the immediate occupants of all the den of Tilden before known only by their Christian names, as John or Thomas of Tilden, at the proper time adopted their territorial designation as a patronymic. It still practically exists, and will be found on the latest ordinance map of England, and it is understood that here the families bearing the name of Tilden had their origin. The author of the Encyclopedia Heraldica states in the volume relating to Kent, published in 1830, that William Tilden paid aid for lands in Kent at the knighting of the Black Prince, 20th Edward, which was in the year 1346. He also stated that from this William Tilden was descended William Tilden of Wormshill, who died 23rd of December, 1613, and from him gave the succession down to the Milst family in 1829. The Tildens, he adds, are a very ancient family in this county. One of the family went to America with the pilgrims and has founded a numerous family of the name in that country, but they spell their name with an I instead of a Y. The records of Kent show that estates in Kent have borne the name of Tilden for more than 600 years. The present Sir John Maxwell Tilden, of Melston, Kent, has in his possession a copy of an ancient pedigree which began with Sir Richard Tilden, who lived under the reigns of Henry II and Richard I a period which extended from 1154 to 1189, and his armorial bearings are said to show that his ancestors intermarried with the first Norman Earl of Chester, a nephew of William the Conqueror. This paper, says Mr. Tilden, may pass for what it is worth. For my part, I am not ambitious to trace my ancestry to the ruffian and robber chivalry of Norm any. It is more consonant with my principles and my tastes to prefer to deduce my lineage from the yeomanry of Saxon Kent, who preserve their free customs and their liberal landed tenures, rejecting primogeniture and maintaining equality of inheritance among all children, and caused their institutions to be respected by the victorious Normans after their occupation of England. It is a line or ancestors who, during centuries of conflict, have, in every instance, been on the side of the largest liberty, and have borne their full share in the struggles, the perils, and the sacrifices through which free institutions have been established. The Tildens of America can trace their lineage back by authentic records to John Tilden, an influential clothier of Ben Enden, who was born about the year 1400. He was the direct progenitor of Nathaniel Tilden, who with his family, consisting of his wife Lydia, seven children, and seven servants, in the month of March, 1634, embarked in the good ship Hercules, of Sandwich, of the burthen of two hundred tons, John Witherby, master, and were there in transported to the plantation called New England, in America, with the certificate from the ministers where they last dwelt, of their conversion and conformity to the orders and discipline of the church, and that they had taken the oath of allegiance and supremacy. Nathaniel Tilden is the first name on the passenger list of the Hercules. He was a man of substance and importance. 
had been mayor of Tenterden in 1522 and was succeeded in that office by his cousin John in 1623 through 1624. His uncle John had also been mayor of Tenterden in 1585 and in 1600. His father Thomas had been one of the jurettes or local magistrates of Tenterden, and his brother Hopestel had held the same office in Sandwich. Within a year after his arrival at Chichuate, in the colony of Massachusetts Bay, where he established himself, Nathaniel Tilden was chosen the ruling elder of the first church of that town. The first conveyance of land recorded in Chichuate was made to him in 1628, and it was bounded by land which already belonged to him. Nathaniel's brother Joseph, two years his junior, was one of the merchant adventurers of London who fitted out the Mayflower and furnished the capital with which her passengers founded and maintained their infant settlement. Before leaving England, Nathaniel Tilden married Lydia, a daughter of Thomas Bourne. Mark Bourne, one of her sisters, married John Bradford, the eldest son of Governor Bradford. Margaret, another sister, married Josiah Winslow, a brother of Governor Redward Winslow. Judith, one of Nathaniel Tilden's daughters, married Abraham Preble, from whom was descended Commodore Preble, one of the illustrations of our naval history. Lydia, a granddaughter of Nathaniel Tilden, married William Tickner, Jr., and was the great-great-grandmother of George Tickner, the author of the history of Spanish literature. Nathaniel Tilden's youngest son, Stephen, married Hannah Little, of Plymouth, whose father married the daughter of Richard Warren who came out in the Mayflower in 1620 and left two sons, one of whom, Joseph, was the great-great-grandfather of Major General Warren, who was killed at Bunker Hill. This Stephen Tilden had twelve children and became a large proprietor of land in Lebanon, Khan, where he resided. His son Isaac married the daughter of Richard Mann, who came out as a member of Elder Brewster's family, also on the Mayflower. John Tilden one of the six children of Isaac and Rebecca Tilden, married Bathsheba Janes, by whom he had seven children, the youngest of whom was destined to become the father of the subject of this biography. In the later years of his life, and after the birth of all his children, he moved from Connecticut to the part of the town of Cannon, in Columbia County, in the state of New York, now known as New Lebanon, where he died in the year 1812. This John Tilden, the grandfather of Samuel J. Tilden, served in the French War and brought back with him from the capture of Louisburg a French musket, with which his distinguished grandson had his first and last experience as a sporting man. It was a smooth bore, so he tells the story, flaring at the muzzle, without any place for a bayonet, with a flint lock and a stock of, probably, French walnut. It had become worn and kicked badly at every discharge, so that it was nearly as dangerous to be behind the gung as to be in front of it. I always shrank from killing harmless birds and animals for sport. The only hunting adventure I was ever engaged in was with the sold musket when I was a very young man, and, under medical advice, was seeking exercise. My younger brother, Henry, then a little boy, went along to carry ammunition and the game. My first fire was at a flock of pigeons perched on a tree, and I brought down eight of them. My second fire was at a few who had alighted on the top of a very tall tree. I did not get a good rest against my shoulder, and, on the discharge, the old muskets wept so violently across my face that I dropped it on the ground to hold my face between my hands. On the next fire I missed my aim. The net result of eight discharges was sixteen pigeons. I stood on my honors as a sportsman and never made another trial. John Tilden's eldest child married Major Army Doubleday, who entered the military service in 1775 and in the sixteenth year of his age. He remained in the service during the whole period of the Revolutionary War. His brother Abner, the progenitor of General Doubleday, who was a conspicuous figure in our late Civil War, was one of the foral or in hope detailed by General Wayne to remove the obstructions from the entrance to the fort at the storming of Stony Point. Mr. 
Tilden's maternal grandmother was lineally descended from Andrew Patterson, who, in 1679, fought at the Battle of Bothwell Bridge, so graphically described by Sir Walter Scott in Old Mortality. He immigrated to this country to escape the harrowing of Claver House and settled at Stratford in Connecticut. His great-granddaughter, Parthenia Patterson, married Samuel Jones and their daughter, Polly Younglove Jones, on the 8th of January, 1802, married to Lamb Tilden and became the mother of Samuel J. Tilden. She was lineally descended from William Jones, who came from England in 1660 and settled in New Haven. Connecticut, where for his remaining 46 years, he was one of the most prominent and influential personages in the colony. For 28 years, he held, by successive annual elections, the office of assistant, or magistrate, of the United Colonies, an office which embraced the duties of a magistrate, and also those of a senator, or member of the superior branch of the legislature, except for the year 1685 when the government of Connecticut was suspended by Governor Andrews of New York. He was elected deputy governor of the colony of New Haven in 1664 and was chosen lieutenant governor of Connecticut in 1689. He was annually re-elected for each of the five succeeding years was one of the trustees to whom the patent of the city of New Haven was granted by the General Assembly of Connecticut on the 20th of October, 1704. Mr. Jones married the daughter of Theophilus Seaton, a wealthy London merchant and deputy governor of the Company of Merchant Adventurers, who were engaged in the Baltic trade. He was on one occasion sent by Charles I to the court of Denmark on a special mission, in company with Rev. John Davenport, of whom he was a parishioner, he came to Boston in 1637 and in the following spring sailed with Davenport and others associated with them to the place which they afterwards called New Haven, whence came the title conferred upon Mr. Eaton by the chroniclers of the period of the father of New Haven. Eaton, in second nuptials, married Anne, widow of David Yale and daughter of the Bishop of Chester. She was of the same family as John Morton, who became Cardinal Archbishop of Canterbury and Lord Chancellor of England. She was also the grandmother of Alicia Yale, who became Governor of the East India Company and the earliest important benefactor of the Venerable Seat of Learning at New Haven, to which he also gave his name. Her son-in-law, Edward Hopkins, who had been a Turkey merchant in London, held the office of magistrate and secretary of state in the colony of New Haven one year, that of lieutenant governor six years, and that of governor seven years. He returned to England, was made a member of Oliver's parliament and a commissioner of the Navy. Samuel Jones, the lineal descendant of Governor William Jones and the maternal grandfather of Samuel J. Tilden, was born at Cornwall, Connecticut on the 15th of May. 1752 and died in New Lebanon on the 9th of July, 1836. He entered the Revolutionary Army as a volunteer on the 4th of July, 1776, and rose to the rank of Major, a title which he bore for the rest of his life. He was for 14 years a Justice of the Peace under commissions from Governor George Clinton. His elder brother, Caleb Jones, also left college to enter the military service and died while in the army. John Patterson, the brother of Samuel's wife, died of the hardship he experienced as a prisoner of war. Polly Patterson, a younger sister of Samuel J. Tilden's maternal grandmother, married Moses Younglove. Young's Chronicles can be read on page 123 in the book. He was a physician by profession and a surgeon on the staff of General Herkimer, who fell at the Battle of Oriskany on the 6th of August, 1777. Dr. Younglove was at his side when he fell and received his sword. After the doctor was captured by the British forces, consisting of Tories and Indians, he was stripped of all his clothes, except his drawers, and marched to Quebec, barefooted. In his imprisonment, he was fed through a knothole by a soldier whose family he had attended medically in the absence of its head. 
His sufferings were so great that he was left an invalid for the rest of his life. He believed the Indians were cannibals and that they would have eaten him if he had not been exceedingly thin. Dr. Youngglove has, himself, left an account of his capture and consequent hardships and the brutalities endured at the hands of his captors in the form of an affidavit which is on file in the office of the Secretary of State. Thus much of the American branch of the Tilden ancestry, it seems to have enjoyed an existence of corresponding dignity and usefulness in England. Estates bearing the name of Tilden have been maintained in the parish of Marden, in Kent, for a period of nearly 600 years. The Tildens of Milst, in Kent, have been for centuries, and still continue to be, a family of great respectability. One of them, a cousin of General William Burton Tilden, and of Sir John Maxwell Tilden, was Lieutenant General and Colonel of the Royal Artillery. Sir John Maxwell Tylden served in the British Army for 20 years and became Lieutenant Colonel of the famous 52nd Regiment of the Line. Gen. William Burton Tylden, a cousin of the preceding, commanded the Royal Engineers at Dover, at Corfu, and at Malta, and on the breaking out of the Crimean War was selected to command the Royal Engineers on that expedition. He had his horse shot from under him at the Battle of the Alma and died of cholera two days after. He was made a Knight of the Order of the Bath, but his appointment did not reach the army until after his death. Note, KCB the Order of the Bath is an order of chivalry and was founded in 1725 for service of the highest caliber. The order has a civil and military division and is awarded in the following ranks. Knight Grand Cross GCB, Knight Commander KCB and Companion CB. His widow, now Lady Tilden, was raised to the rank to which she would have been entitled if her husband had been made a KCB. His eldest son, Richard, also entered the Royal Engineers, served with distinction in the Kaffir War of 1852, for which he received a brevet lieutenant colonelcy. He had charge of the right attack of the English at Sebastopol and for his services on this occasion was made a D.C. to the Queen, which carries with it the rank of full colonel. Note, personal aide de camp is an appointment in the royal household of the United Kingdom. He was shot through both legs while superintending his work in the trenches, and died at Malta on the voyage home to England. William, the nephew of this Richard and grandson of General William Burton Tilden, is now a captain in the Royal Artillery. Richard, an nephew of General William Burton Tilden, was also captain of artillery and a promising young officer. He was killed by the fall of his horse while hunting. It will be seen from this rapid and imperfect summary of what we know of the Tilden family that it has been continuously represented in various departments of the public service with distinction for more than 20 generations and has transmitted a name which, during all that long period, has been stained by an o-crime that the muse of history has deemed worthy of recording, unless it be a crime of which so many of them were guilty, of shedding their blood and laying down their lives to secure the independence of the North American colonies. The entire text of Mr. Tilden's notes on the origin of the Tilden name and family will be found in the supplement to this volume. They will reward a careful perusal, independently of any interest the reader may have or lack in the subject of this memoir. End of chapter 1.